Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Good Stuff. I'm Kevin Billy, and as always, we appreciate you joining us today. While I'm a little biased here, we have the mental performance coach for the Cleveland Guardians. I don't want to screw this up. Wow. Brian Miles with Switch. us, a favorite, a favorite team and culture of mine, so I'm really looking forward to jumping into this. Brian, what's going on? Another beautiful day here outside of Cleveland. Um, and yeah, it's just enjoying the off season. Uh, I'm probably similar to you making the adjustment to the new team name. So I'm sure there will be some mistakes here and there, but uh, appreciate look at the, the, the switch from you up front. Cleveland Guardians uh, will start to get it to roll off the tongue a little well, easier here. And I'm okay with anything uh, we say the Indians or Jacobs Field. I, I, I still call it the Jake. But hey, let's, let's just d- uh, jump into this. We've had a couple other ones on, you know, your good friend, Lauren, Justin Sua, and Nicole Detling here. Mm. I'm so intrigued by what you guys do. Um, let, let's just go with, with you defining mental toughness and what that is to you. I mean, yeah, we're going to dive right into the tough questions. I love <laughs> it. Uh, it's, you know, it's, I do find it interesting. I think uh, each person defines the idea of mental toughness, I think a, a little bit differently. Uh, it's, I think it gets, in my opinion, thrown around quite a bit, you know, Mm -hmm. like that person's mentally tough and, and they're not oftentimes describing the behaviors or habits that, uh, actually entail that. And so, you know, when I think about the idea of, of, of somebody who is mentally tough, mentally strong, or, or sort of in my world, like they are, are deliberate with their mental performance. That's probably the definition that I would, I would use a tick more is, uh, yeah, they, they, recognize that the journey is and the process is is what actually leads to results. I think mm-hmm. that that defines mental toughness, mental strength, whatever it is, is that um, those individuals invest their time, their purpose, their intent, their energy, their effort all into the process and the journey. Um, and they recognize that the results are a byproduct of that. And you know, again, I, I, I know you're a basketball guy. I know you know a lot about baseball. It's like, yes, it's, it's a results driven right. world that we live in. Like it's not just sports, like business, entrepreneurship, like it's results oriented. Let's not school. Like let's not pretend like it's not, but my goodness, especially in professional sports, like we don't control the results. Like we, right. we control very little aspects of the results. And so Um, I oftentimes think like, why are we giving so much of our energy, effort and intent to the results when we don't control them, but yet we control so much of the journey and process that if we do that really well, that gives us the best chance to have successful results. Um, And unfortunately, we, we don't spend time there. Right. Right. You, you, but you hit me right away, right off the bat with my coach stuff like this, this journey and process and the habits and what is it in terms of the journey and process? Cause I know as a coach, it's like, you're preaching that right from day one to, to day 162 in your world, or maybe longer. What, why is it that people struggle with the fact that it's a process, you know, they either, whether they want their results immediately, or they just mm-hmm. can't get through a slump and understand it, that it's all part of the process. What, what is the complexity with that when it comes to, you know, the players, especially? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's boring. Yep. It's monotonous. And it is not immediate. Like we live in the world of instant gratification. We live in the world of cell phone, watch, pings on our computer, you name it, we get it fast. You can Uber eats food now. You can, I mean, things come directly to us when we want immediately. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, is there is nothing sexy about doing the same boring stuff over and over again. There is nothing beautiful about it. People don't see it. You don't get the the glitz and the glamour of going in every day, doing your pre-work and then, you know, doing the boring T work and then doing the post game work to make sure that your arm is ready for the next, like nobody sees that nobody. And so it's difficult, I think, for, for players to really understand that um, you are sacrificing the short term for a long-term game. And that's, that's, I mean, let's just call it's uncomfortable. People don't like that. And, uh, and they want it now. And, you know, and like, I mean, like mental performance is, is, is like the perfect intersection of this too, because I mean, think about how many times a player, you know, finally is like, Hey, you know, I'm going to talk to the mental performance coach. I kind of want to work on whatever it is, whether it's like, 
being more in the moment. I want to kind of like, I feel a little bit uncomfortable up in the box or my confidence is kind of wavering. And you as the mental performance coach, like you've been waiting for this moment, right? You're like, here we go. I got this. Yeah. Like, let's do this. And for us, it's a little bit of like having to sort of pull back a little bit, like understand the moment, obviously establish the relationship, but understand sort of where the player is at. Oftentimes recognizing that a player will take you where they need to be. And in the same sense, like, yes, you can provide mental performance interventions, but the idea that like they're going to do that the next at bat and Mm -hmm. it's going to work, you know, it's like, it's this just such a, it's like this fascinating gray area of like, but there's just too many variables, right? There's yep, just right, like there's right. so many variables there. You you can't guarantee that that's what did or did not do it. And just like mental performance, like you uh, you can't go to the gym and do sit ups one time and have a six yeah. pack. Like you can't. It's like training the brain. Like we are we are strength and conditioning coaches for your mind. It's the exact same thing. Like it it takes time and sweat and equity to to do that. And then and then you have to maintain it right like you have to sort of like water the garden and and watch it grow and and sort of blossom into this this process like we've talked about but it's it's just it's not glamorous and it's it is it's boring and monotonous and people don't like boring these days yeah that's that's so good what what triggers someone to have that like are they like i've embraced boredom my whole life i I love it like I, i love yeah, I, I'm not saying that it makes me special. I'm just, I, I just know that it's always been that way. When I, when I think about ball handling drills, like there was just something about doing those ball handling drills for 15 minutes a day and then knowing that I got to do them tomorrow and, and kept doing them. And as I've said this on here a thousand times, like to my boys, like it's easy to work out on the days you feel like it, guys. Oh, yeah. Like, so, so what triggers this? Like, am I born with that? Is it something you create? you know, you know, through a, a process of repetition through these things like ball handling drills or hitting on the tee. Um, you know, what is that? Am I making sense though, to, to understand or try to understand how, how this is, how this comes about in each individual? Cause I'm, I'm sure it's very different. It is. I, I firmly believe that you can train it. I think that there's certainly probably people that are more adapt to it of like, uh, you know, like you said, like you sort of embrace the, the boring and, and monotony of things. Um, I think part of it is, is we have to sort of peel back some of the onion layers of like, of, of why that process works. Um, and again, that's like, I'm, I'm so pumped that I work for an organization, especially at the major league level that does this at a performance team level where it's, this isn't like a siloed mental performance coach does this strength coach does this medical does this sports science does this. We are part of a performance team and our entire group works together in in conjunction with the fundamental coaches. And I think as we sort of look at a player holistically, we're able to sort of understand, okay, where, where is this player very strong? What are they doing? That's allowing them to be successful. They're at the major league level. So they're obviously doing things that are helping them be successful. Where are some areas that might be a, a tick like of a detriment for them where we can do some improving on it. And then how can all of us sort of, encompass what this player needs to help him do it. So, right. So if it's, if it's the S and C guys who are like, Hey, we need him in here a little bit more motivated to like, want to get after this work. I don't think he sees the value in the S and C work as much as maybe some other pitchers do. Right. Then sometimes they'll tap into me and be like, Hey, be miles. Like you've got a pretty good relationship That's with good. this guy. Can we, can we like help me understand motivation again? It's not about me doing work with the player on motivation. Sometimes it's just facilitating uh, a bit more of an understanding mm-hmm. for the strength coach to lean in a little bit with this player on motivation. Um, and so that's like, that's the fun part about that entire team that's working together is that we're all sort of moving, like ebbing and flowing with this wave mm-hmm. of players and being able to, to facilitate work as a group. And again, it's like, it's not always Brian doing the mental skills work. Right. A lot of times it's sometimes equipping the hitting coach who's got the best relationship with the player with the information they need to be able to, to support that player when he needs the support. Um, And and I think that's the part that we miss a lot because there are so many egos in coaching, in sports, in mental performance, you keep, you can just keep naming it off. There's so many egos in there that people want to be the guy or the gal, right. They want to attach their name to the player. 
and they want to be, I'm the one who fixed him. I'm the one who made him successful, so on and so forth. And it's like, um, I'm proud to say that we don't have that um, because we just, we just want to be a good baseball team. Right. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That, that cohesion and, and just, yeah, it's like all of you guys are, are are in that canoe road in the same direction, you know, and, and getting to that point for that individual. I, I would be anxious to know just in general, you know, what made you want to do it? It's obvious to me that you have a passion. I mean, of course, we've got to know each other a, a little bit here. Uh, and, and I can just tell, you know, whether I'm following your Twitter, or just kind of some of the conversations we've had, you're, you're, you're really into this, you're passionate. Um, wh- why did you want to do it, Brian? So I am like fascinated by the human potential. I, and again, whether it's like, whether it's Red Bull athletes jumping off of buildings, pulling parachutes or wingsuiting, um, whether it's ultra marathon runners, you know, I, I grew up skiing in, in New England. So whether it was like, you know, watching guys do big air tricks or, you know, skiing down really steep mountains and then growing up in like a family of, of four siblings who all, who all played soccer. I think um, like most people, there's, you saw, you saw individuals that were incredibly talented that sort of wavered and never met their potential. You saw individuals that maybe didn't have all the talent in the world, but seemed to just always thrive and, and be in the right place at the right time and work their butt off and be successful. Mm -hmm. And like, there is, there is something there. There is something that is between our ears that allows people to do that. And of course I had my own experiences, you know, I've, I've talked at, at nauseam with our, our, our players and they can all tell you it because they've heard the story of me missing a penalty kick, you know, in the sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament and, you know, really struggling with that moment. And, 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 Honestly, like it was my thoughts that impacted me because I heard the other team's coach say something and it, like it just spiraled. Um, you know, is that the reason I got into mental performance? Probably not entirely, but that moment sticks with me. I mean, my goodness, I was in uh, that was in like 2006. So like I still think about it. I still talk about it. And, uh, you know, there's but there is there is something there about our potential like it yeah. is and it's it's unbelievable how much we, we talk to ourselves and yet we're just not in tune with it. Like we don't, Mm -hmm. we don't listen. We don't, we have so many choices in the day that we just sort of let happen without being deliberate about them. And I, I just, I feel like the best in the world are really good about being deliberate and intentful with the choices they have Mm -hmm. and, they don't leave things up to chance. And I think that's the biggest difference between the highest performers and maybe performers that are struggling is that the highest performers just, they don't leave things up to chance. That's good. That's really good. How, how does one, you know, how, how does one train the brain then if this is, cause man, I, once again, I, I think I'm fortunate with some of these things and been blessed with them. And I think you go through competition, you're in a locker room and you see some that have it, that don't have it, that struggle with it, that, you know, man, I wish we would have had somebody like you back in the day. Like, right. I think about all these things now and these stories you're telling, but if, if somebody's interested in this, they're not as good at it. Or if somebody is good at it and wants to continue even like, how, how does one train the brain? Is there anything like one or two things that you could, you could tell the listeners, like, you know, I would be deliberate with these things. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I wish I had somebody mm-hmm. like me when I was a player too, you know, um, I mean, I, I was the player that when I made a mistake on the field as a soccer, a college soccer player, if I made a pass and, and, and went to the other team or whatever, like I would literally look at the coach. I was that kid. I was that uh, kid okay. who looked at the coach and like wanted that affirmation that like I wasn't going to get taken out or that it was OK. I mean, that's a real thing. There, there's still plenty of players that are like that. And there's potentially still coaches that like thrive on that, you know, and that that's that's a whole separate conversation, Yeah, but (laughs) that's that's a whole separate podcast on coaching. (laughs) But, um, you know, so I think that like, there are some big buckets for the world of mental performance that, that are very tangible and real things we can do. So first and foremost, like, what are your habits? Like, are your habits on par with like who you want to be in the future? Right. And that's, that's a very real thing. And again, when we talk about your habits, like it is about sacrificing in the short term for that long-term gain. 
So the things that are in your control, like, you know, like, when are you waking up? Like, when are you, what are you doing in your sort of like downtime? And again, this isn't about, this isn't like bashing. Like if you want to play video games, like do you, if you want to watch TV, like, you know, I'm, I'm not crushing that. I'm just saying like, right. you have a certain amount of time in the day. How deliberate are you being with that time mm-hmm. and, and the, the habits that you develop. Um, and so I highly encourage people to think about the, the habits they have, like, how are you fueling yourself? Like, what are you putting into your body? Um, like, like how thoughtful are you being about that? And then when it comes to the work that you're doing throughout the day, again, these are habits. These are the things that we do each day. How, how deliberate and intentful are you being? Like, how are you there? Like, are you present when you're, when you're in the batter's box, like hitting off of the tee, like, are you there? Or are you thinking about the future? Are you thinking about the past? Like, are you there? Um, so I think that that's probably a huge part. How, how deliberate are we with our habits? Um, I think another, another big factor for, for me that, um, I've slowly sort of gotten into, I've actually, I've actually needed like a little bit of guidance with it, but, um, a bit more of journaling. So Mm -hmm. for me, journaling has been really important because, you know, again, like I said, we think so much, we have so many thoughts that just live in our mind and, um, and they stay up here, right? Like we ruminate on them. And when you're ruminating on something, you are being pulled into the past and you are being pulled into the future and you are not in the present moment. And when we journal, we give our thoughts a place to live, right? Like when we're journaling, our thoughts have a place to live. They are no longer in our mind, in our brain, occupying that space, occupying that time. They are now on a piece of paper. And when they're on the paper, we're able to one, like free up some space up here and be a little bit more present. But two, we're able to look at what we were thinking about in a more objective manner. We are, we are distanced from it. When it's in our mind, it's very emotional. It's very real. We, we can't get away from it. When it's on a paper, we're actually, you know, we're actually able to distance ourselves a bit more from it. And I think that that allows us to be more objective about the thinking and be more objective about, you know, is this something I want to give my energy, effort, and intent to? Yeah. And if it is, great, I can plan it out. If it's not, you know, it's there and it's no longer up here. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that that's really important too. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, just tangible skill, sleep. Yeah. Like sleep, you have to sleep. Rest, rest and recovery is so powerful. It's so in our control. And we just we don't value it as a society. And it's sad, honestly, it's sad. Um, and in high performance, you have to value sleep. It is the truly only way to cognitively recover. Um, and we, we need to find more ways to, uh, to impact and value sleep, both for youth athletes, professional athletes, parents, everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. Like sleep is the way to recovery. Yeah, man, that that's good stuff. There's so much in there. I, you know, in, in doing this podcast and and hanging around people like you, and it, I think the thing that's really stuck out to me. You you mentioned some of these things. It's just a daily discipline, and and to be able to focus on the present, like that, is such a skill. Like, and you you can't control yesterday; it's over. You have no control in the future tomorrow, and allowing yourself to be present and. I love what you said there about the journaling part because I found that to be helpful too. Because when you have all these thoughts <laughs> that are ruminating up there, as you mentioned, how can you possibly be focused on on what it is you're doing? Or like back in the day, I would have been like, "I'm awesome because I'm multitasking." You don't. Well, multi, I'm splitting my brain and all these things up, and I'm not even efficient at what I'm doing. You know that 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 was a struggle for me for a while to to figure that out. You know whether it's and this is what I would tell people because I don't know how you're wired, Brian, but I'm that guy that has so many windows open or I'm trying once again. And, and and when I hear things like this, I'm like, I want to do it. Just pick one, just pick two, just start, you know, like whether it's like literally get to bed at 10 and wake up at six and shut off your phone an hour before and don't be on in an hour. I just think there's so many things out there, um, you know, that, that, that are good for, for people to be doing. Walk me through Brian. I'd like to know, we, we've never talked about this. Um, I, I want to know, like, walk me through the season. How inconsistent are your days? It's like the only thing consistent knowing you're going to the park and then you just don't know what to expect from there. Uh, yeah, you could say they're, they're pretty inconsistent. Um, they're like, they're consistently inconsistent, I guess you could say, I don't, I don't know if that's, a, I didn't I'm know how to say to that or not. It. 
Yeah, I don't. Um, so, like, yeah, I know, I know the general time I'm gonna get there. I know that it's you know. So if we're home, I you know I live outside of Cleveland, so I'm I'm super deliberate about spending time with my family and my kids, um, and you know trying to maybe get some things done around the house I need to get done before I go in. Like that's part of my routine, but it's definitely doesn't matter how tired you are. I'm waking up with my my kids, making sure that I'm spending that yeah. time with them because I, I barely see them. Um, and then yeah, so when you get to the field, I think. Um, I think that, you know, we get there before the players. So I think it's a little bit of time to, if I got some deep work, I got to do some emails, some, some things like, I, you know, I can kind of get those out of the way. And then the world of mental performance, I, you know, I want to emphasize this and I, I don't, this is my personal opinion. I don't think in grad school, it often gets talked about enough. I really don't. I think we we're heavy on theory. We're heavy on mental performance intervention and research, which is important. Do not get me wrong. Like the hard skills are so important. The best mental performance coaches in the world are phenomenal with the soft skills. They are connection and relationship building machines. I love it. That is what they do. And if you ask me about the one consistency I have, whether we are at home or on the road, it is fostering and building relationships and connection. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to like, in, in the world of like professional sports, especially at the major league level, that is something you are doing every single day. It doesn't matter how good the relationship is with the player or the staff member. You are constantly fostering it throughout the day. And I think that is the one piece that I think is missing a ton from the world of mental performance in grad school. And for, for people to understand is that like, you don't just get to have the equity with the player or the staff member and it gets to stay. Like that is something you work at every single day. And it is, it's, it's, it's a balance. Like it is, is a true balance because um, you say the wrong thing at the wrong time or with the wrong tone, mm -hmm. or you, you push a little bit when you shouldn't push or you, you, you know, like you have to be careful. Um, and this isn't to like scare people. It's just like, that is a skill relationships, are a skill connections are a skill. Um, and that that's the, the, the constant that we have every single mm -hmm. day. And I think, um, you know, there's, there's a, a humility and an authenticity that comes to it as well. Um, you know, we had, we had a couple of players that had kids during the season. They like their wives and them had a kid. Um, like I did too. And so it's like, yep. you know, you're, you're sort of sitting with them in that and you're like, Hey, you look tired. And they're like, you look tired too. It's like, we're both tired. <laughs> so like we both have kids. Like I get, you know, it's like, you're there, you understand. And it's, I didn't play professional baseball. I, I, I don't play. And it's, I don't ever want to pretend like I know how hard it is, but, um, but I want to make sure that I'm learning from them and that they can learn from me. And that, that connection and relationship is, is what is always a constant there. Um, and, and that's important. I think for anyone that's watching this, that wants to get into this field, mm -hmm. like that's, that's where you should spend your time because you can always teach the hard skills. You can always learn the theory. Um, and that's a whole other thing about how to apply that. But man, the relationship, the connection, like that's, that's where the money's made. Yeah. And I think there's just such a human element to that, right? Like regardless of what you do, I do the guy down the road that that's everything I, I am. I'm on that train of, we, we just need connection more in our life. I, I, I know that it's, it's that locker room theory to me, you know, and probably to you that you were in. I, I just think people get outside of that if they had the, the luxury of being in it and then they don't have it, you know, small groups, whatever it is. Um, this may be a, a, a boring rebuttal to your explanation here or question, but what, what if I don't know how to do that, Brian? What, what if I am, am wanting to connect? What, what does that look like to you uh, to, to give me some things to get better at? I think it's a phenomenal question. I think that if you want to get better at connection, listen more, talk less. Mm. There's like, there's this uncomfortability with humans today where they just don't like silence and they, they always feel like they have to prove their worth and show everyone how smart they are and how knowledgeable they are. And I firmly believe that in sports, the player and the coaches will take you where they need to go. They will. They will, they will take you exactly where they need to go 
and where you as a mental performance coach or a coach need to be. And it's your willingness to listen and ask the right questions at the right times to be able to get there. And, and I'm, I'm talking about like listening. I'm not talking about thinking about what you're going to say. I'm not talking about like, like being in the future or in the past. I'm talking about listening, being with that person in that moment and really caring about what they're saying. That, that is the number one thing of how you build connection and relationships. And I, like, I guarantee you, everyone listening to this podcast is going to be like, oh, no doubt. I totally do that. I totally do that. Like, yeah. I definitely thought I did too. And I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't. And, um, it's, it's a skill to, to not say the thing that pops into your head to be like, Ooh, I want to say this. Don't say that. Like w- literally don't say it. Like I'm, t- I'm telling you the first thing that pops in your head, just don't say it. Just listen, listen more. And like do the occasional pause of silence because guess what? The person you're talking to will probably have more to say. Um, and listen, this, this is like, this is in the right moments. I'm not, I'm not saying just like be a silent mute, like mime, you know, like like where where you do nothing. But I think that we, we miss relationships and connection when the individual that we're trying to build that relationship with feels like you are there to take something from them or match something from them versus give them something. And the more we give, the more opportunity we have to be able to foster that connection that we're looking for. That's gold. That's gold. And it, it, it's so true. That listening thing, man, it, it, that, that is so true. You, you, all the, all the, uh, all the bad things that you were describing were me. I'm, I'm it's, it, it's, it's better they, when they you were get me behind. too. Yeah. But you know, you know, honestly, you know, what's crazy, Brian is, I mean, I, I obviously do have a great deal of respect for it and, and try to get better at it and work at it. Doing this podcast has really helped, you know, mm-hmm. just, Hey, ask the question and then be quiet and listen. And it's amazing how much, you know, how much you learn. I, I'd be interested to know this too. What, what's, what's the, you know, what was saying, whatever you, you can or want to, what, what's the hardest part of your job? Uh, you know, so, I mean, I think that, so the real first answer, like the first answer, a big picture is like, obviously being away from my family for like a massive right. amount of time. That's, mm-hmm. I need to say it because it's, it's probably the unsaid thing that just needs to be said. Uh, so, uh, obviously shout out to my wife who holds down the house, the children, everything when I'm gone. Um, and she's an absolute rock star. So first and foremost, being away from my kids and my family. Absolutely. Um, you know, on the work side, I think I actually think a lot of mental performance coaches would say this and I think I'm getting better at it, but, um, you know, when you're a fundamental coach, like you're a hitting coach or pitching coach, and you say to a player, Hey, we're going to, we're going to change the grip of the baseball on your fastball curveball slide or whatever, or we're going to, we're going to change the position of your elbow, right. When you're hitting and we want to watch and see the results of this, like you can measure that, right. Like you can, you can see it. You can, uh, you can get video of it. You can get like the edutronic cameras that show the spin of the ball. Like you can see if the, you know, spin rate increase. Like you can do all those things. Um, when, when we're talking about like being more present in the box or like using like power statements or cues to like get your focus back or like a reset routine, like we talk about it, but I, it's, it's, it's really hard to see, right? It's, right? it's really hard to see. It's really hard to measure. Everything is very qualitative. It's, um, it can be like, it can be frustrating. It can be frustrating. And it's like, again, I, I, I don't want to like, it's, I go back to the relationship because it's like, you know, you're working with this player, right? You're working with this pitcher. Who's like, who really is losing focus a lot. And you, and you talk about this like sort of reset routine where it's like, when you feel like you've lost, lost control of, of an at bat and, and like you're pitching and you feel like you've lost control or you've thrown two or two or three balls and you're like, I've lost control. Like I'm emotionally kind of like lost it. Like, here's, here's the reset routine. Like, here's what we're going to do. Whether, whether it's like, you know, stepping off the rubber and taking off your hat and looking at like a, a focal point behind you, right? Like I can see that. I, mm-hmm. I, I can, like, we can see that it's, and then it's about like, do they commit to doing it? Right. So if they do it and you get to follow up with them after the game and you're like, okay, like let's, let's debrief this. Let's talk right. about that. Like, how did it work for you? Like, or, or if they didn't do it right. And, and, and you have the relationship again, this is where 
it's this balance, right? Like, do you have the relationship with them to go up to them and be like, Hey, like you, you committed to this. You said you wanted to do this. Like that looked like a moment where you lost control. Like, like, let's Mm -hmm. talk about this. Let's figure that out. And you're just constantly gathering information as a mental performance coach. You're gathering these sort of like these images and this, like this, this just bulk of information to hopefully be able to use and facilitate um, across players and coaching staff and so on. It's just, you, you don't get to just like look at it on a computer screen, like our pitching coaches. And right. coaches did. Right. Well, and I think there's gotta be in order for you to get buy-in from that, going back to the relationship piece of it, there, there's gotta be that foundation of trust, right? Like why, why when they can't see something, you know, right away and get those immediate results that you talked about earlier, then, then I would, I would think they're, you know, they're, they're going to that bank account of, you know, what have you deposited up to this point? Correct. And then you're going to get more buy-in. Exactly. I mean, it's all about the equity that you continue to build with them. Um, but it's, you know, I do think it's about having tough conversation. Now, again, tough conversations are built on the foundation and rock bed of relationships, but like, I'm not scared to go up to certain players and be like, Hey man, like that's BS. Like, yeah. you know, we said we were going to do this and you backed out, like you wussed out of doing it and having a real conversation. I'm going to do it at the right time in the right place around the right people. But like, you have to be comfortable and be able to do that. Um, and again, there's equity built there. You're not just going up and doing that to some free agent. You just signed with, yeah, right, right. but like you, you, but you have to be able to do that because like, again, our job is to make you a better version, the best version of yourself, whatever that is. Like, that's my job is to facilitate, to make you the best version of yourself. And, you know, I, I'm going to hold our players accountable. I'm not going to let them cheat themselves. If we're going to commit to something like you are not going to cheat yourself, just like as a coach would hold somebody accountable too. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you. It's hard. It's hard at the major league level. It is. It's way easier at the minor league level, right? There's like, those guys will do anything. Yeah, because they're trying to, to get, get there. <laughs> they will do anything to get a chance to be at the big leagues. Like a lot of the players that have gotten up there, like they, there, there is like that fear of like, if I do something a little bit different, like, is it going to be the thing that maybe makes me not do as well and possibly get sent? Like that's a, those are real emotions and thoughts that our players experience. Um, and I think that again, like having individuals that they trust and feel like they can invest in, um, you know, development at the, at the major league level is a scary thing to do because wins and losses really matter. Yeah. I'd, I'd be anxious to know here, we'll get a couple more and, and, and get into three pointers, but I'd be anxious to know if you have a, a biggest takeaway from being around professionals. And as we were texting the other day, this, this hot topic of, en- of energy or energy and how much power there is and, and using it to influences, you know, and, and what we control. I'm, I'm huge on this. So I want to hear that, but I, I'm asking, I'm, I'm bringing that in because I'm wondering, you know, from what I gather from others is that these guys, you know, some of the things we talked about earlier, but that's one thing that they master, you know, so I don't know if that, you know, I'm not answering for you. I'm curious to know if that is one thing or if there are other takeaways that you've had that you're like, yes, these Boom, boom, boom. These are the ones. Yeah. So I think, so big takeaways are that the small things are the big things, like hands down, the small things each day are the the absolute big things Um, that sometimes saying nothing says a ton. I've found that to be like incredibly impactful and powerful at that level. Um, It's not about you. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just not, I've learned that it's just, it's never going to be about you. As a mental performance coach, it's just not about you at all, ever. Um, And if you want it to be about you, you're just in the wrong profession or you're in the wrong sport, I can tell you that much. And then, um, like, the last thing is you're allowed to have fun. Like, I I have learned that you are 100% allowed to have fun. Um, If I could only tell you some of the things that went down in the dugout this year, like, uh, you're just, you're allowed to enjoy. You have you have to enjoy it. It's 162 games, whether you're winning or losing or what's going on, like you have to enjoy it. And we have some players that are just so good about reading the room and understanding when we need, like maybe a guy to be like running around in his jock strap, like trying to dance with all the guys just to get him excited and loose. Cause you know, we lost in a walk-off last night or just like the different type of music that we're playing or just the fun things that we're doing. Um, We have some really great guys about that. And I think, for, for me as a mental performance coach, it's, it's being the same person every day. Like you have, like 
win, lose. I'm coming in excited and fired up. And the boys know that every single day I am going to be the same guy. And I think that that constant for them is really impactful and meaningful. And I'll tell you what, our strength coach is the same dude every single day. Our sports scientist is from Australia, same guy every single day. Our head athletic trainer, same guy every single day. Our massage therapist, same girl every single day. Like we just bring it every day. Yeah. We're the constant for our players and for our coaching staff, no matter what. And I think that that adds a ton of value to an organization. Ton, ton. I mean, that, that kudos to you and those guys, because that, that is, that's really difficult to do because, you know, when, when you hop in that car, you know, it's like, if you had that game today, you've got that sick one at home. You've got, there's so many other things that you're bringing in there. So I, I think that's, I think that's awesome. And, and, and Brian, obviously I, I know a little bit of this from being in Cleveland in my time and, and knowing a couple of guys still, I, I would be anxious to know like what that answer would be like if you work for another organization, because that one's special. And so what is it? I almost said the Indians, but I won't. What, what is it that's so special about the guardians culture? Because like, I, I just like when Shapiro was there, some of those guys like they're, they're, they're I mean, I'm a nobody to them. And, and Mark, Eight years later, hopped on a on a Zoom with me. You know, they 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 call the ticket takers by name. There's there's just something going on up there that I'm sure the things that you just alluded to are embedded in that daily culture. Yeah, I mean, we care about people. I think first and foremost, like we uh, like don't remember, like it's there are days where we're frustrated and there are days where we're annoyed with certain people and so on and so forth. But like we we care. We recognize that we have like sort of built something special. We hold each other accountable. And um, like, honestly, low key, we kind of dig being the underdog and we've always been that Um, like people just write us off. And like, we are a blue collar city here in Cleveland and we just legitimately don't care. And there is like nothing we love more than just being that chirpy, scrappy, frustrating team to play. Like you watch it happen. Like there's not like some of my favorite things. Like, again, people are like, what did you love from the season? Like, no doubt. We had some awesome walk-off home runs, like great things. Some of my favorite stuff to watch is like, you know, I think, I think it might've been like Jose, Jose Ramirez had like, like a 12 pitch at bat that like, I forgot who was against, but like, I know he's had like multiple of them, but like, he's like this 12 pitch at bat. And like our whole dugout is just like chirping the pitcher and it's like, you know, oh, like, like what are you going to try to throw him this time? You know, and then Hosey hits a double. And it's just like, you feel that energy. And again, I don't remember the score of the game. I don't remember who we were playing. Mm-hmm. But like, that embodies the organization, right? That like, we don't, like Tito always says, you never back down from a challenge, right? Like, we don't back down from challenges. Like, we recognize that we're going to have constraints that other teams don't. But like, that's not an excuse. We do stuff the right way. And if you do enough stuff, the right way it ends up paying off, you know? And I think that that's the part that we really value. Um, and we embrace who we are. Like we fully embrace who we are and we go out, we get after it. We have fun um, when we support each other and like we have each other's backs. And, um, and I think that's really telling, honestly. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That, that's, that's really good. And I, 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 I know that I can, and I, even now I can see it, or like you said, it's funny because like, when you see Jose go from first to third, when the third baseman just wasn't there and like, he's running and like, it's at the same, it's just stuff like that, that, and you feel that energy. Um, And honestly, I I don't know how I, I I know we were kind of messaging at the end, just hoping to finish 500, but I I don't know how an organization has, you know, the, the, the record that you do at the end of the year with all the things that you went through, if you don't have a lot of those things in place. So I think it's, I think it's really commendable. Um, what are, uh, what are, I always like to talk about uh, books on here as we wrap up and get into three pointers. You have a favorite one or a book that impacts you? Any, any book plugs? Ooh. Um, so I guess maybe like a few. So any Ryan holiday book, like ego is the okay. enemy is probably like my top Ryan holiday book, just because I, I feel like, uh, as a society, we have like this unhealthy relationship with our ego, um, peak by Anders Ericsson, really understanding like he, kind of talks about the 10,000 hour rule, but it's more about like how we actually become really good at things. And then my nerdy pick is uh, the brain that changed itself by Norman Dugy. I think it's D O I D G E. Um, It's a book on neuroplasticity that is absolutely fascinating. Um, The adage that like 
your brain is like developed, fully developed, right? Like, oh, like 23, 24, and like can't teach a dog, like an old dog new tricks. Like your brain is stuck as the way it is. And just the world of neuroscience and specifically neuroplasticity, the idea that our brain is malleable um, and how we can learn new things the neuroscience behind why we can learn new things is incredible. And it's like, it's actually like shaped a lot of how I talk to players about like developing new habits or like when you make an adjustment in your swing or your delivery, sort of, I always like tell them like, Hey, you're rewiring your brain. Like, here's what's going to happen. Like, this is why it's going to be really uncomfortable. And this is like an analogy for it. Um, it's just, it's shaped a lot of the way that I do things. And I love it. It's, it's, it's a big time nerdy book, but it's, it's a blast. It's it's the first time somebody's mentioned it on here, so uh, <laughs> awesome. I, 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 it's a step. But I, yeah, Ryan Holiday, I love. He's great. The, the stoicism too. I'm really getting into that. It's it's really good. Well, hey, let's um, let's hop into. Maybe I'll give you instead of three pointers. Maybe we'll call it like three penalty kicks today or something. Get you get you that back, right? You can you can knock. I it see. In. Nice. Um, is. Number one, if if people could uh, could only learn one thing from this talk and grab hold onto it, what would you want that one thing to be, Brian? We talked about a lot. Um, so I, I like, I, I know we didn't dive a ton into it, but I think that my, my one thing that I want somebody to take away from this talk is that your most precious resource and commodity is your energy. And you need to be very selfish and deliberate with that resource and commodity. So if you are going to give your energy to something, please make sure that it's something that you can influence, touch, manage, or control. I recognize that like, that's not our world a lot, but if, if you really want to be like incredibly deliberate and intentful with, with your, your, your most precious resource and commodity, which is our energy, put it into things that you can influence, touch, manage, and control. And if you sort of let the other things slide off, you'll, you'll actually see a drastic change in your life. Good. Number two, if Brian could have stepped over here today and, and been behind the mic and asked Brian a question, what question would have you asked him that I did not ask today? Do I have to answer the question or is it just what I, what I would have asked? I'll, I'll leave that up to you. But sometimes <laughs> I do hold people accountable. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Um, probably would have asked him what his greatest failure is. That's good. That's good. Um, and, and we do talk about that. I wish I would have honestly got into that because that's obviously such a big thing in baseball, but maybe that's for a side conversation someday. Well, finally, hey, Brian, number three, good stuff's the name of this. Just give us some good stuff here in closing. Anything maybe that you feel is appropriate at this time? Yeah, I mean, listen, I uh, I do, I do like, obviously I work with with the Cleveland Guardians. I do a lot of like other talks for, for businesses, entrepreneurs, groups, big companies, sports teams. Um, and, and a lot of times they ask me like, Hey, like if you could only teach one mental performance skill, what would it be? Um, and every single time without doubt, I pull up a picture of my kids and I literally say, hunt the good stuff. And I firmly stand by hunting. The good stuff is the most important mental skill that we teach. And I'm not joking. I have the slides literally on my computer right That's now. Great. And it's, it's because, and I, and I, I love the word hunt too, because it's a verb. And it's like, we have to seek it out. Like we have to, we have to hunt for it because we're so inundated and just filled with bad stuff, right? And it's like, we need to find the good stuff. And so one, I love the title of this. Like, I love like that, like that's important to me. Two, like that is the most important skill we teach. And three, like my good stuff is um, like, I'm home, I'm here, like I'm present. Um, I am like deliberate about my emails, my phone. Like really, I, I, I've, like left my phone in the house, like multiple times going out doing things. And I'm just, I'm present with my kids and I'm, I'm here with my wife. And it's like, it feels nice to be a supporting part of this team that I am at home. And I think that's like, that's just such a good thing for me right now. It's, it's like so rejuvenating, even if my seven week old doesn't sleep very much. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Thank you for sharing. Hey, finally, let, let's two things here. Number one, uh, where, where can listeners connect with you online via social media? Yeah, I mean, uh, feel free to look me up on LinkedIn if you want. It's just Brian Miles. Um, and then on Twitter, it's Brian, B-R-I-A-N-C, as in Charlie, Miles, M-I-L-E-S. I like to just post a lot of mental performance stuff um, on Twitter and I'm always happy to chat with folks 
um, whether it's about different content, book lists, things like that. But just absolutely love this world. And it's uh, it's it's fun. We're learning. We're growing. And it's a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Great follow on Twitter. I love what I love what you produce. Second thing, tell us a little bit about this uh, about this event coming up in November here that you're going to be a part of with with our friend here, Lauren. Yeah. So um, I uh, am lucky enough to be invited as a guest speaker to Lauren Johnson's Elite by Choice event. It's November 11th through the 13th out in uh, Colorado. Um, Lauren's putting on an event for basically really anyone, but it's, it's driven towards mental performance and she's going to have some of the best mental performance coaches come and talk sort of like the idea of like the, you know, things they don't teach you in grad school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, uh, it's open to, to 40 individuals. She's going to have some, some marketing and branding coaches there, some business coaches, um, to really help people sort of expand this view of what mental performance is. It's not always about working for a team, but sometimes it's about getting your content out there. And, uh, yeah, she's, she's going to do some phenomenal work. And if, I haven't heard Lauren talk. I mean, if you want to talk about a good follow on social media, my goodness, like she is an absolute rock star. So, um, you know, I'm going to be out there talking at her event and I'm super excited about it. That's awesome. Well, hey, Brian, this was great, man. Thanks so much for spending some time. Um, I I really do appreciate it. I I love what you're doing. Um, It's it's been great getting to know you here. And and it's obvious, like I said earlier, you've got such a a great passion for this. And and I'm sure that's just so beneficial to the people around you from from most importantly at your home. And then obviously what you're doing here with, with the Guardians. So keep up the good work, my man. And thanks for being with us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Well, hey, this was great. Uh, as always, we appreciate you being here. And you know by now, email me at goodstuffkevin at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you. And until next time, good stuff.